here is part 8 and my series finale of the 2017 PFA season recap. Last time I talked about the Century South, which, had, which I was talking about Miami, Dallas, Houston, New Orleans, and Orlando. Now I'm going to wrap it up with the Century West which consists of the El Paso Mustangs, Seattle Quakes, Las Vegas Gamblers, San Francisco Union, and San Diego Rays. So let's finish this and wrap up the series. So we get started with, just like New Orleans last time out, we have another team that went from first to worst, and that was the San Diego Rays. I didn't think they were really were that good of a playoff team last year, despite the fact that they went 12-6, and six, beat Miami, and then almost knocked off Pittsburgh in the divisional round. I did not think that they were a really good playoff team, and I was expecting some regression in 2017, even with their new rookie quarterback, but I don't think even I expected this. They really s fell off flat. They had no offensive production. Their defense played Okay, this sometimes good, but this team really, really shat the bed this year. Although, near like the middle part of the year, they started to win a whole bunch of games and like they were starting to get back into the mix, but they just really could never recover. This was a terrible season for them after making the playoffs the year before. Now, they did get some quality wins. They swept San Francisco, who was 500 this year. They beat Washington at home. They beat Seattle on the road which was impressive. So, three of their six wins were pretty convincing facts. I actually know four of their wins were against teams with winning records, and one team that did make the playoffs, so it wasn't all too bad. And as bad as the offense was, they got a little bit better statistically when it comes to their players. Their running back, Joel Rose, had 1,000 yards. David Setton, their wide receiver, although did not play as good, still got over 1,500 yards and 12 scores. So, has good season in that regard. But, of course, their main problem offensively is going to be the quarterback situation. Of course, remember they drafted Ronaldo Schneider in the draft. They had their starter from last year, Burton Valentine, start for the first part of the season. But, he wasn't good. And then he suffered a serious injury and knocked him out for the rest of the year. So, Ronaldo Schneider was put right into the mix. And he wasn't really that good. 2600 not even 2700 yards 18 touchdowns 15 picks yeah not really that good he is right up there probably with Gerald Putman as probably the least good quarterbacks of the 2017 draft class of the seven because that was pretty disappointing and they also got some holes on that defense to fix even though that defense played okay their defensive ends their tackles and their cornerbacks are not really that good so, San Diego, unfortunately, looks like they have a lot of work to do to have any shot of getting right back in the playoff mix anytime soon. So, it looks like they're going to be in the cellar of the Century West for the time being. So, a terrible season, but man, a lot of work to go. But, hey, at least you made the playoffs last year, am I right? And you got your quarterback now for the future, and you hope Ronaldo Snyder will become your future quarterback. And then, oh boy, what a disappointment this was. The San Francisco Union. Remember last year, they just fell short of making the playoffs. And of course, you remember last year, they drafted their quarterback of the future, John Getz, in the second round of the, um, ex the original draft. But they also had their backup, Ruben Williams, and he played in a few games, and he actually outplayed um, John Getz in those games that he played in. So there was a quarterback controversy of who should they stick with in 2017. Well, San Francisco eventually decided they're going to stick with John Getz, and they traded Reuben Williams to San Francisco, um, Oakland for a whole bunch of picks they got in this upcoming draft. So it looked like these next few years, they were going to be loaded, just loaded with talent to stack up for the next bunch of years. But, it, oh God, nothing went right for them this year. I mean, they started off 5-2, and two, but of course, they then began to collapse. They kept winning games and keeping it around 500, but they kept losing games again. And then near the end of the year, when they were 8-5, and five, they went 1-4 and four the rest of the way to regress to 9-9 nine and nine and miss the playoffs. I mean, statistically, they were the number one run rushing offense in the league. They were fourth in offensive yards, but 23rd in points scored, 25th in passing yards. And John Getz supposed to be one of the better quarterbacks in the league, by the way. 
he regressed mightily this year. And, of course, making Ruben Williams, who also regressed in Oakland, make you think Oakland-San Francisco might not have panned out that trade very well. And to make matters worse, because, remember, they had two, two first-round picks in this draft. Two first-round picks. They had their, they first drafted their tight end of the future, Ben Clark. He missed over half the season with injury, and in his eight starts, he had just seven receptions for 77 yards. Ouch! That's the best tight end in the draft, and he failed that badly. That's really terrible. And then their other first-round pick, Joseph Smiley, he did really good as a fullback. 179 yards off of 51 carries and two scores. He's got a little bit of a future, so they at least panned out really good with that pick. Then their extra second-round pick in Larry Satterfield, who was a wide receiver. He didn't do good. 30 receptions for 188 yards. He's supposed to be like the second um, best receiver in the team. He flamed out so far. Their linebacker, John Knoll, who they took in the second round as well. He played okay, but he had injury problems. And then finally, their extra third-round pick was another linebacker, Timmy Harris, who only played in eight games and had just two tackles. So think about that. They had an extra first, second, and third round pick. High picks in each round, too. All three of their players so far flamed out. Tight end. Best tight end in the draft. Flopped so far. Wide receiver. Flopped. Court um, linebacker. Flopped so far. That is a really bad sign when you had all these picks and you failed so miserably so far. Now, of course, they still have an extra first round and second round pick in 2018. And they got their um, extra first round pick in 2019 so they still have some chances to fix this and who knows maybe all of a sudden these players could turn around and become stars for the team like their fullback and their other linebacker look like so far but so far San Francisco is not looking good and not only is these new draft picks that they made have a lot of problems to worry about their quarterback John Getz has a lot to worry about he was the second overall pick that the team ever picked and 19 touchdowns to 12 interceptions after just throwing 22 touchdowns and 9 picks the year before with a 90 QB rating. Yeah, he has a lot of pressure and he is definitely on the hot seat after they trade away Reuben Williams, which, is, which the Reuben Williams side thinks that if they had him still, the team would have done much better off even with him struggling in Oakland. So 2018 is going to be a big year for um, San Francisco. They're, they're um. John Getz has to play better. Their draft picks this year have to play really good. And along with their two extra picks this year have to do really good. And if they don't, ugh. That Reuben Williams trade is going to probably go down as the worst trade ever in the league. And that's only like the very ever trade too. And that would be really sad. Next up is the Las Vegas Gamblers. And they were one of the best teams considered going into last season. And they had a rough start to begin the year and they just couldn't really recover and ended up finishing 10 and 8 and missed the playoffs now the team had a lot of expectations to actually try and make the playoffs in 2017 and at first everything looked like it could do it they were six and free they were right there in both the century west and of course the century conference playoffs and looked like they still could get it but then they went on to lose four straight games to fall the 6 and 7 and like oh god they are so doomed. But then they went on to win 5 of their last games to improve to 5 I mean, 11 and 7, their best record in franchise history, but of course that ended up not being enough to make the playoffs as Seattle ended up getting 11-7 record too and during that four game losing streak they lost to Seattle twice, giving Seattle the sweep, so they got into the playoffs as they missed out. And unfortunately, statistically, I think they regressed overall, even though they had the better record. Certainly their defense, although they allowed 15 points, so yeah, they allowed a whole bunch of yards, as you can see, but they got, I mean, allowed very little points, so that's pretty good. And they were 12th in score, and that's not bad. Although, in terms of yards, they kind of went backwards. And unfortunately for them, James Beverly, one of the best running backs in the league, he had a major step back this year. Even though he got 1,500 yards, he was nowhere near as, as peak as he was last year. John Maxwell, however, their star wide receiver, 
even as he's going into age 31, had an awesome year. And, of course, they have a young wide receiver. I mean, two young wide receivers. They're rookies, hoping for either one of them to become his like um, next um, receiver to compliment him, as you can only hope so. And, of course, Keith Belcher had an awesome season as well. They suffered, unfortunately, some injuries on the defense that really hurt them in the end. But the team... I still think, even though they kind of regressed, I think they could be a threat still in the um, conference playoffs, and especially in the Century West. But, of course, the main thing is they have to not blow games like that. You can't have that four-game losing streak in the middle of the season when you desperately need it. Just think, if you just beat Seattle just one time, just one win over Seattle, and, in fact, both their games against Seattle we're within a score. So, you could have beaten them one time. Guess what? You're in the playoffs and Seattle's eliminated. And who knows what could have happened in the playoffs if that happened. But no. You blew it and choked it against that. And, of course, Seattle went on to make the playoffs as you missed the playoffs. So, honestly, that's probably the only two things that Las Vegas needs to worry about. How is... um. John, I mean, James Beverly going to play better? How is John Maxwell going to do his, his um 31-year season? H is their um, wide receivers going to finally pan out to be a compliment to him? And are they going to not blow games this year? Because all but two of their losses were within a score. So even just, like I said, just one win, especially against Seattle, would have gotten them in the playoffs. But no, they choked it. So they got to fix that next year if they want to make their first ever playoff appearance. And then we get to the last of the two playoff teams, and this one was a real surprise. The Seattle Quakes. Oh my god, last year, I thought they were going to be the worst team in the league. Seven, I mean, 1-17 in 17, I predicted they were going to be. Then they had their sudden rise, where they were like 3-1 and one to start the year, and they ended up finishing 7-11, which was quite an impressive season, although statistically, they were really bad that year, and honestly, were probably one of the more worst teams going into this year. And I did not think they were going to have anything going their way. But they started off surprisingly really well. They were 4-2 and two and right there deep in the playoff race. And look, they actually might change the course and actually go on to make the playoffs. But then they lost f four in a row as they fell to four and six. And like nothing was going to go their way, especially with the rookie quarterback Jody Tucker, who was putting up a really good season, but still falling behind in a lot of close games. But no, they rise to the occasion. After that 4-6 and six start, they went on to win all but their one final game. Well, not their final game, but all but one of their last eight games to finish 11-7 and seven and just barely, just barely, thanks to both Las Vegas and Dallas choking, managed to get into the playoffs for the first time ever. So in the first playoff game at Miami, they actually put up a good fight at first, but in the end, in an offensive shootout, they could not keep up with Miami, especially with their defense being pretty bad still, as you see. 20th, well, it's not bad, but it's mediocre, I guess you could say. With that run defense, though, is really good. The main strength, though, so far this year is the offense, especially the rookie quarterback, Jody Tucker, of all the quarterbacks, that were drafted this year, he is easily the second best quarterback on the list right behind Charles Cunningham of Detroit. In his 12 games as a starter, almost 3,300 yards, 27 touchdowns to 9 interceptions. He was really, really good this year. And that was definitely something Seattle needed because they did not have a quarterback at all last year and now they finally got him. Now, of course, they got their wide receiver too. It, Eric Benjamin, he had like, I think he had over 2,000 yards this season, but he's going to be in his age 33 season coming up, so he's up there in age, so he's got to get probably replaced soon, and they got some young wide receivers, so maybe that's one thing they should focus on in the draft is either getting a wide receiver or getting a running back because they really need a running back that can get easily over 1,500 yards maybe, and then this team could have one of the legit powerful offenses in the league. So Seattle, after just last year, being, I thought, one of the worst teams in the league. And although they played like one of the worst teams, they still ended up going 7-11 this year. They ended up shocking everyone again by going 11-7 on the final last lap of the season, making the playoffs and put up a good fight against Miami before they blew it. I think Seattle 
really could be a contender, not for PFA Bowl free yet, but they could easily be a contender in the Century East, the Century West against El Paso and Las Vegas, and at least be a contender in the playoffs, especially if Jody Tucker continues to um, improve throughout his first few years as a starter, because this rookie year was very good, and if this is just his beginning start, can you imagine how good he would be when he's at his peak? So, very good season for Seattle. Good Congratulations on them for making the playoffs. And last but not least, the final team to talk about, and that is the El Paso Mustangs. Wow, what a year a difference makes. Last year, remember, they I thought were going to be the one of the best teams in the league, and they ended up shitting the bed in an embarrassing fashion throughout the year, and they ended up finishing a very disappointing 7-11. And I really didn't know what to think for the team. I didn't think they were going to really go anywhere. I thought they were going to be around the same by and large this year. And, of course, to start the year, they start off 1-3. And, and, like, yeah, it's probably going to be the same. Nothing's going to go right for them. James Fabinobidox is struggling really badly. He's probably going to be gone at the end of the year, and they got to do a rebuild. But, no, they turned around. This team went on to win five straight games, and then... Now, all of a sudden, they were 6-3 and free and lead the division. Then they stumbled a little bit to fall 7-5, but then they went on to win all the remaining games to get a win record, 13-5, make the playoffs, win the Century West, and even get first round by, funny enough, unbelievable. And in their first playoff game host in Miami, they pulled off a comeback and beat Miami to make it to the Century Conference for the first time ever where they hosted Pittsburgh. And deep into the third quarter, they were up 17-0. It looked like it were, they were going to go to PFA Bowl 2. But nope. The comeback happened. Miracle and El Paso, whatever you want to call it. Pittsburgh ended up scoring 21 unanswered points to make it to PFA Bowl 2 as El Paso falls runner-up in that regard. What a blown opportunity this was because you know what? We didn't as we didn't talk about this as much, but when you look at their stats, El Paso really was one of the best teams in the league. Look at that. They were eighth in scoring, ninth in yards allowed, twenty six in passing yards, but that was more because they ran the ball so much to I'm um, not allowed James Fabinovidox to turn over the ball so much. So they just fed and fed and fed the ball. To Allen Davis, and defensively, 6th in scoring, ninth in yards allowed, 11th in passing yards, and ninth best run defense. This team was really, really good. They remind me very much like the team that they were supposed to be in 2016 that never showed up. So, what a blown opportunity it was for El Paso because if, I don't, I don't know if they could maybe beat Manhattan in Manhattan for PFA Bowl 2, but, I mean, if Pittsburgh could make it there. El Paso, I don't see why they couldn't, because they were most certainly just as good as Pittsburgh, especially almost defensively and offensively. They were much better than Pittsburgh, so they could have easily put up a much better fight. But of course, we'll never know as they fell short. But of course, the main thing that's going to hurt this team is their problem from last year. They can't really win games when they have to score less than 20 points. And that continued this year, too. I just looked it up. This year, when the team scored over 20 points, they were undefeated, 11-0. But when they were forced to have under 20 points, they were 2-5. and five. And that doesn't include the playoffs where when they scored over 20 points, they won their game against Miami. But when they had less than 20, they lost against Pittsburgh. So that's really the main problem with El Paso these last two seasons. They had a lot of close games, but... When they need to get more than 20 points, they can't get it, and they lose those games. So, that's going to be the main thing for El Paso this year. Are they going to continue this into the 2018? Are they going to be the team that we thought they were going to be in 2016 and be a PFA Bowl contender? Or are they going to fall off the earth and be like what they were last year? Maybe this was just like a last gasp before the regression finally begins. But either way, if they want to have any shot to win PFA Bowl free and even make it there, they have to to start scoring 20 points or more consistently. Because guess what? In their history combined, they've won, I think, all but one of their um, 20 games in their existence when they scored over 20 points. Otherwise, they've only won three of the 36 games they've played in their career, I mean their history, when they have less than 20. So 
You want to make it to the playoffs and win PFP Bowl free? Start scoring more than 20 points. And that's all I got to say about El Paso. Very good season. Master turnaround. Almost made it to PFP Bowl 2, but they just blew it. They had it right there, and they just blew it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the recap of the Century West in the 2017 PFA season. And with that, this series, after three months, is finally over. Wow, it took a long time because I had to update all the players and such. And, of course, I was sick for a while, but I finally got around to doing it. It was nice talking about the teams again. I'm looking forward to 2018 eventually for the teams. And, of course, I'm still getting ready to do the 2017 all season. I got to do... Um, show the updated records and then of course i gotta do um cu roster cuts retirements free agency the draft hope to make an actual schedule this year which i couldn't do last year and stuff and then we can get ready for the 2018 pfa season but until then see you guys next time and hopefully this year it will not take like a damn year like it did last time although i got already behind like three months so far <laughs> And if I'm being honest, I'm behind by a whole year already. <laughs>